Back at Harvard Stadium, Tim Murphy, longtime head coach for the Crimson in his 24th season. 195 career wins, 163 here with Harvard. He's got his team off to a good start, has to like a lot of what he's seen. This drive got off to a good start before the end of the quarter with a 15-yard pass play, and before this quarter can get going, a false start. For 72, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, just 28 yards of offense for Brown, only four yards on the ground. That's a huge number that Brown, for Harvard, just picked up another first down. That's four of them, and again, the defensive touchdown makes a big difference. But 25 yards rushing for Charlie Booker, I would think, that the goal here for Harvard is to try to establish him a little bit more here as we start the second quarter. The Harvard penalty, the third on the day. It's cost them 30 yards so far. Handoff comes to Booker, and nothing there in the backfield. Brown just gang-tackling at the 25-yard line. Well, it'll take some time here with a new quarterback trying to get used to his running back. Watch how Booker wants to turn up field after the penetration comes out wide, but there's nowhere really to go as that handoff takes him on the opposite direction a little bit with the sweep. Have not really been able to establish the run so far. Now Smith's been okay. He's been able to work out of it. That was Jay Williams' first one on the tackle there for the Bears. Two wide receivers split out to each side. Another give to Booker up the middle. Sheds one tackle. And Dewey Jarvis able to slow him down as Booker makes it to the 31, a pickup of five, but Still a long third down coming for the Crimson. Better blocking that time by Harvard. Set up that wall to the right side, and this time no one's able to peel back as Booker able to find that hole and end up in and making the play. Daniel Aidman was also in helping out the Brown. Charlie Booker had 139 yards last week, second most among Ivy League runners. Only Carrick and Brooks of Dartmouth ran for more. Third and 11, Smith. To the right side, he's got a man, it's Scott again with a big catch inside the 35-yard line. A flag back in the offensive backfield. This is going to come back with a hold against the Crimson. Well, it's disappointing. There's the hold that comes back there, but this is still such a good play by the freshman quarterback. His ability to step up in the pocket, you got a little bit of a look at it there, able to weave through, find that space, and commit to stepping up and making a throw. However, the space was available to him because of the hold. So instead of a first down inside the 35 of the Bears, it will be a third down back at the 21-yard line. And Harvard needs to get to the 43. Third and 22. Once again, penalties hurting. Harvard had four offensive holding penalties last week against the University of Rhode Island in the 17-10 loss to start the season. Give comes to Levance Northington up the right side. Across the 25, and he's ridden down at the original line of scrimmage, 33, and Harvard will be forced to punt. So that at least will give a little bit more room to Zach Schmid on the punt coverage. Good it's block better. here by Jackson Ward, 58. Made a block right there to allow that to spring for extra yardage. However, though, not enough to pick up the first down yardage needed. See a black brown player at the end of that play, Keegan O'Hearn, down. He's able to be helped off the field. One thing that Brown had to deal with last week, and Harvard did as well, as they both played down in the Ocean State, was the heat and humidity that you often get early in the season. Today didn't seem like it was going to be a day like that, but then the sun popped out shortly before kickoff. Temperature here uh, in the greater Boston area has been in the mid-70s, but it feels a little bit hotter than that, especially down there on the turf field. Schmidt back to punt. Harvard had to adjust there. Brown showing pressure. Harvard had to reset for more of a punt block. Schmidt is two punts today, 44 and a half yard average. Another twisting kick for Boylan back at the 30 or 26 yard line. Reverse field across the 30. Tap dancing down the sideline and knocked out at the 43. Another flag pops out at the end of the play. 
I believe this is going to be called back here. Let's see if there's a block in the back anywhere. Harvard indicating that that's the call. Try and see if we can get a look from our angle. Return team number 13. It's a 15 yard penalty. First down. Yeah, it just got cut off on the edge of that replay. 13. That's the number that was called and just committed that block. But that's where you see the speed that Brown has in the return game and his ability to get around the edge and turn north-south. That's what Brown needs to do on offense. This is a really important possession here. We're still early in the second quarter. There's still plenty of time in this game, but Brown has not been able to stay on the field so far in this game and has to find a way to pick up first downs. They have just one so far. James Faduli, the culprit on the call. The give comes to Boylan across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Pickup of two here. They've gotten Boylan involved in a couple of different ways on handoffs. He was a track and field threat as well as a football threat at Garces Memorial High School in Bakersfield, California. Freshman has really turned heads in his first college season. He's in motion. And they'll get it to him. Pass for Boylan. And he'll be stopped just shy of the first down. A shoestring tackle on the play is made by Harvard's Charlie Walker. Well, Walker does a good job to make up for this, but watch how as Duncan holds the ball just long enough to hold Walker from being able to chase, and that allows Boylan to get upfield a little bit and pick up some extra yardage. Third and one to the outside this time. It's Blandberg, and he's right at the marker. Wesley Oxbury was there to force him out, and they'll be just shy of the first down, and a flag pops in as well. Well, this is really good pursuit by Augsbury. Coming from the far side to prevent the ability of the Brown player to get a first down. And it looks like there's an official down who may have gotten run into on that far side. And a linesman down on the Brown sideline. The penalty will be against the Bears. We see the official down over on the Bears sideline. Harvard trainers come from the other side of the field. Special foul. Block for the way. To him. Offense number 19. The penalties have to get to the goal. Third down. Jacob Prawl is called for the penalty. Are we half the distance to the goal? So even though it would have set up a fourth down, Harvard will elect to take the penalty yardage and replay on third down. Take another look here with Blandberg here along the sideline. Number 19 was the penalty call. You see it there on that low block. It's one of the things they're trying to cut out of the game, that low chop block. And then you saw at the end of the play, that's where the official got hit. Good to see him up on his feet now. Teen yard line. So it gives the Bears another bite at the apple, but with a longer field here. That's where they're trying to go. Need to get just short of the 30 at the 29. Third and 15. L.J. Harriet back with Duncan. Duncan, deep over the middle for Prowl, and he gets out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Well, he needed 15, they pick up 25. Finally some protection there, and that's a really good throw by the Brown quarterback, Duncan. A lot of time, and Brown's going to go quickly to the line, trying to capitalize on it. That's his best throw of the day. And Prowl is a guy who they compare a lot to Alex Jetty, who was an all-Ivy League wide receiver last year, L.J. Harriet. On the little pitch to the outside, gets across to the 42-yard line. Pickup of four or five yards, and Brown starting to move. So in the end, that penalty taking it, forcing Brown back, ultimately was a mistake for the Harvard coaching staff. They look for Harriet. It's a pass to the outside, and a great tackle once again is made by Charlie Walker. 
Well, Prawl's got to hold his block for Walker, and Walker was able to jump off that block. Brown ended up sending four out to that left side of the field. Actually had numbers, but it's a great job by Walker coming off his block to make the tackle. Duncan gets the call from the sideline, and his coaching staff, Bill Estes, head coach, offensive coordinator for this squad is Frank Sheehan. It's a coaching staff that has been together pretty cohesive for the last decade. Duncan, right side, catches made by Logi, and he is immediately blown up again. Charlie Walker getting involved. A long run here, good open field tackle. Well, third down, if you throw short of the marker, you're asking for this sometimes, and it's just a great job by Walker again, who makes a good, strong tackle. And he's able to... So a punt here, Ryan Kopech back on. Shelton Mosley back to receive, and he's going to let that bounce by him. And Brown, tremendous job to down this one. Isaac Whitney, the speedster, comes down. And Harvard will have 99 yards, leading 14 to 2. They're backed up once again in their own zone. A great individual play by Brown's special teams here in the Ivy League opener. Well, Harvard now pinned back again twice earlier. Harvard was stalled here once it led to a Brown safety. See what kind of blitz protection Brown uses here with Harvard back at its own one. Looks like they spot it here at the two, and Harvard will pass. This is Joe Viviano into the game, and his first pass completed to Jake Baran, a first down. So they bring in the fifth-year senior to play quarterback. And Smith Viviano is standing on the sideline next to his head coach, but this is a good throw by the veteran quarterback, gets the ball off back against his own end zone. So Smith started the game. And Viviano, who started the opener, with the give and up to the 20 yard line on the run. There's Charlie Booker. Booker scored the opening touchdown for the Crimson. Harvard got a defensive interception return for a touchdown for its second score. So interesting move here. The offense had been stagnant the last few drives. You bring back in the senior from just outside Philadelphia. They Give it to the outside for Shelton Mosley, and he'll be up across for a first down. Excuse me, that's Adam Scott with the give. Well, uh, Smith is on the sideline looking almost as if uh, this may be a situation where we see a couple of different quarterbacks for Harvard. Both have played well at times. Viviano did a lot of good things last week in the game against Rhode Island, and Viviano with the veteran, with the fact that this drive started so deep, you wonder if that's why the decision was made. Smith had struggled against the goal line a couple of times in the game. Viviano will fake to Northington, rolling to the outside. He's got a man at Stansel sliding to make the catch just inside the 30. Well, Brown brought pressure that time, ended up bringing six. And the reason that this target ended up open was because of that extra man coming in. Watch here on the left side of your screen as the tight end flares out. This guy coming allows the extra space underneath, and it allows for Viviano to hit his target. Viviano was the starter all last year. To the outside, another completion across the 30. Short gainer on the play. Terrell Smith with the tackle. Catch is made by Jack Cook. Sophomore from Shaker Heights, Ohio. So third and manageable here. Four yards. Three to four yards here to pick up the first. Tightly bunch in the personnel. Viviano is a threat to run. He'll pass this time. Goes to the outside. Catch is made. And a big play for Harvard. It was Henry Taylor on the grab. His first catch of the day. And they're back in Brown territory. Good protection here to allow time to throw. Watch as Booker comes in as an extra blocker. Plenty of time to make that throw, and it's a good throw in stride by Viviano. It's the first career catch for Henry Taylor. He played in just one game last year as a sophomore, didn't play as a freshman, and makes a big play to move the ball to the 38-yard line of the Bears. This drive started back at the two. Viviano. 
to the left side. Scott is wide open and he's got room to run inside the 20. Adam Scott down to the 11-yard line. Busted coverage there from the Brown defense. Well, not only that, but there's just so much time. Look at where there's two guys here. They both come on the inside route. That leaves the guy wide open, Scott, at the 30-yard line. And there's also so much time in the protection. It allows Viviano to see that, and he is marching Harvard down the field. They had three players on Jake Baran. Here's Booker. Stood up at the six, able to lean forward a bit. Pick up a five yards in the play, and the Crimson knocking on the door of their third touchdown. Watch here as Scott being in motion, that draws the Brown defender in a little bit, and it allows for some space for Booker up the middle. So this has easily been Harvard's most impressive drive of the day. They line up Shelton Mosley to the outside. In motion, they fake the give. And in is LeVance Northington on the Wildcat play. Northington from six, and the Crimson extend their lead. Well, that is some kind of impressive drive. Watch as the hole opens up. Block thrown right there, block thrown right there, and it allows the space for the touchdown. A couple of good blocks on the left side, and Harvard has its second offensive touchdown of the game. Well, Lavance Northington, a quarterback by trade, but listed on the Harvard roster as a wide receiver. Dual threat quarterback when he played at Lutheran High School in California. Scores the touchdown, and the Crimson with the point after go on top 21-2. Harvard off and rolling a 98-yard drive to go up by 19. City Club to the degree that I am because I had such a great experience there and I want folks coming after me to have a great experience. The fact the Harvard Varsity Club brings to life and provides some resource to help people stay in touch and be successful in life after college is something I'm very proud of. I felt compelled to be part of this event because I want to pay it forward just like people did you know, for me. You're not just part of the Harvard Athletic Community for four years, it's really a lifetime. A lot of pressure will be on this Brown offense to turn things around as they now trail 21-2, and you see the numbers there. Brown's offense today averaging just over 2.5 yards per play, and Harvard is taking advantage of that. Do the math on that. That's not a first down every possession. That's a big thing, and only one yard per rush. That has got to be an improvement here for Brown over the next few minutes. By comparison, Harvard's at about seven yards per play in the game. And what a great drive that was. Smart gets his leg into it. This is Boylan again from his four-yard line across the 15 and to the 23. And that's where the Brown offense will take over. The Bears have just two first downs today. And Brown, we mentioned it, they didn't have a whole lot of opportunity at times 
Last week, they were only on the field for about 22 minutes of the game. Bryant was on the field for 38 minutes, but they're going to need to string something together. Nick Duncan, his first year as a starting quarterback, you know, he's a guy who last year really got the coach's attention in the only game he played. He played against Columbia. The numbers were pedestrian. He was 7 of 16 passing, but it, it was what they saw within the game, how he was able to get the offense going that inspired the coaches. And a good drive starter here to Jacob Prahl to pick up about four yards. I think that's going to be what we're going to see here from Brown. Quick passes, quicker on the outside, little out route, easy throw to complete for Duncan. Try to get his confidence going back here again in terms of completing the passes. We came out of the show telling you about his dual threat nature, but we haven't seen it in the run game. Under pressure to the outside, and Harvard's Chase Guillory able to break it up. It was intended for Emerson Logi, and that pressure helped force the hurried throw. Well, we talked about the quick pass game, but that time it was the quick pass game because of the pressure coming from Harvard. Seen it a few times here with Duncan. When the pressure comes, he's throwing off his back foot a little bit and trying to whip that ball in there, and that's a tough play to make. Good play defensively. Bears are just one for eight on third down. They face a third and six. Another back foot throw to Harrington, Harriet, and he is wrapped up. No gain on the play. Another punt coming. Tanner Lee, who had the interception return for a touchdown earlier, makes the tackle. Watch the read here. It's a better job by Duncan coming through his progressions, but Lee just steps up, comes in from the secondary, and three and out. The pressure you saw at the start of that play, DJ Bailey was bringing it from his defensive end position. Big reason why that play was blown up. Kopech, another punt, and another good one. Shelton Mosley way over his head. He'll have to pick it up. Shelton Mosley to the outside. He's got room to the 25. Stops close to the 30. Kopech, the punter, in on the tackle. And a great return after a long punt by Brown. And Harvard turns nothing into something in terms of field position thanks to the dynamic work of Justin Shelton Mosley. Harvard looks to add to its advantage. Just off your screen there, but almost a block in the back, but a good job by Harvard holding up to lead to this offensive series. Given the first play to Booker, as Harvard taking over at the 31-yard line. Ball out. Brown says they have it. And they do. Josh Weisberg jumping in on it, and Booker fumbles after the 27-yard punt return. Harvard gives it right back. And all of a sudden, the Brown Bears have some life. He initially stood up and kept on his feet. That's one of those scenarios. As you saw, Brendan Pine able to make that initial stop. Booker is tough to go down. Had he gone down right away, play would have been over. But he stays up, and Brown, to its credit, continued to rip at that football. That's the catch-22 sometimes on a guy who's so elusive and so hard to get down that sometimes you get an extra hack or two in there to force the ball out. Brown has to take advantage here, 4-12 remaining in the half. The Bears again only with two first downs in the day. Duncan will fake the pitch to Harriet. Looking deep, nothing there yet. To the outside, and it's intercepted. Harvard picks it off and returns the favor. This is such a good play. Duncan thought he had time, steps up, and he just undershot that ball a little bit, and it's a diving catch by Joey Goodman. What an outstanding play. Watch this, 59, who's going to come across your screen right there. There he is, cuts across, makes a diving play. That is such a good play. That's one for Duncan, had space in front. That's one where you want him to take it and be able to find his space, get some yardage as a quarterback. We know he can run the ball, has not shown it today, and that's one where he probably tried to force that ball. Duncan's second interception of the day and a false start penalty coming against the Crimson. 17, five-yard penalty, first down. Now again, it took a perfect play defensively to make that interception, but that's still one with a lot of space in front where you're looking for your quarterback to try to run the ball a little bit. That's the second career interception for Goodman. He had one last year against the University of Rhode Island. First and 15 for the Crimson, starting now back at their 23-yard line. 
So back-to-back -back turnovers. Viviano back in there at quarterback, spins at a pressure and throws it away. It's a good veteran play by Viviano to get enough time to at least get rid of that ball, throwing it in the direction of Shelton Mosley. Again, if you're just joining us, Viviano, the fifth-year senior quarterback, did not start the game. It was the freshman Jake Smith who was able to drive the Crimson to a touchdown on their second possession but wasn't able to do much more after that. Viviano took over for him on the last drive, drove them 98 yards in nine plays for a touchdown. Viviano has Levance Northington there with him in the backfield. And flags pop out again. Start. Harvard. Offense number 66. Five yard penalty. Second down. A number of procedure penalties. That's Matt Jones. You know, we have talked a little bit about some of the rebuilding that Harvard has got to do, and it, it really started with the offensive line. They lost a lot from last year. Max Rich, who was in training camp for the Patriots, part of that offensive line that's not back, and uh, that's an area where if your offensive line is set, that's uh, a major, major source of comfort for you, but when it's, uh, it's not, well, that can really be a detriment. The give to Booker, and he cannot escape the grasp of Kennari Drayton, the Brown defensive end. And it'll lead to a long third down coming. Third and 20. Harvard has been able to dial up a few big plays today. They'll need another one here. Three and a half to go here from Harvard Stadium. Harvard on top, 21 to 2. Viviano will give it. Northington dances away from one tackle, and he spun down out across the 20 to the 21-yard line. They'll get a little bit more space for Schmidt to punt, but Brown will get it back after the interception. Running away from the extra blocker. Harvard had an extra blocker on that right side, but not enough on a long third down. Again, third down and long. So that's been a situation Harvard's found itself in a couple of times in this game and not able to convert. And the two penalties really killing that try before it had a chance to get started. Schmid back to punt again. Senior from Georgia. Sends one to midfield. Boylan makes contact. And a penalty looks like Ezia Coley was there. Tried to slide down and avoid the contact, but was just a little bit too far downfield and ends up making a little bit of contact, and that's what's going to lead to the penalty. I don't think they're picking this one up. No, they did earlier in the game when the punt was already it. over Boylan's it's head. 26. The 15-yard penalty on about first down. That's a big one. Brown's defense gets the job done. Still have time here to establish some momentum going into halftime. Harvard will receive the second half kickoff, but you can see Ezia Coley right there with the freshman returner Boylan. The fact that that punt was short really threw off the timing of the Harvard cover man. Duncan. Trying to escape the pressure. He does initially able to spin out of a tackle and turns what would have been a loss of about seven into only a one or two yard loss. Just not enough time to try to find anything there for Duncan. As he tries to run through this. Pressure comes through here. That's a case where you need your wide receiver to pick up a block. He was not able to do so. Max Farber was there causing the initial pressure. Harriet goes to the right side this time. and He shoveled out of bounds close to the 32-yard line. Seeing it a little bit here. You see Harriet earlier. Can't pick up a block. Harvard's got numbers. Here then is Harriet, who's such a good weapon, but he's basically one on three coming around the edge, and there's no way, no yards after the catch. Has not been much extra yardage for Brown after contact. Harvard's had a nice job getting enough numbers around the ball carriers to not allow any sort of big play from Brown and Harriet, who's so explosive in space. Bear is going to the no huddle offense here with under two minutes to play. The give comes to Harriet around the left side this time. Looking for a block. A flag pops out late as Harriet goes out at the 30. 
same thing. Look at how many crimson jerseys are around Harriet there. Just nowhere to turn up field. Holding offense number 63. 10-yard penalty, second down. Holding penalty against Christian Montano, who was the starting center last year, but now he's the left tackle. 63 right there on the left side of your screen. Look again, all the Harvard pressure. One, two, three, fourth body comes up. There's just nowhere to turn it upfield. Montano really feels like a, a good offensive lineman, can play any position at any time. They just maybe use a few different tools when you're on the inside versus the outside. Rare misstep here by the Brown offensive line. This will throw them all the way back to the 40. They need to get to the Harvard 27 here on third down. Actually spot the ball at the 42-yard line. Third and 15 for the Bears. Harriet back there with Duncan. Duncan to pass. And he is wrapped up at the 47-yard line. Crimson sack. And that will end another bear drive. Just beats his man around the edge. Watch right here. He's going to take the long route. Got around. Just beat that right tackle. DJ Bailey just uses his speed. A and once again, Brown. Nothing doing on offense. Just still just two first downs in this three, beg your pardon, first downs in this first half for Brown. And Tim Murphy really feels like DJ Bailey is one of the outstanding linemen in the Ivy League. He's compared him a lot to all-time sacks leader for Harvard, Zach Hodges. Some pretty big praise. Punt will go out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line. Another long field for the Crimson to work with in 63 seconds to go here in the first half. Well, you probably don't expect much here for Harvard, but they have done enough here in this first half. Now a big pick six. They've played so well defensively. Defensively, they pitched a shutout. The only points came on the safety for the Brown defense. And for the offense, had the one drive with Viviano. Looks like he's going to get the lion's share of the playing time in the second half. Really nice job in this second quarter. And we'll see how aggressive Harvard wants to be here with, as you say, a minute three remaining. The Viviano in the shotgun with Booker joining him. Figure you see a steady diet of Booker at the end of the half. He's got a little bit of room tripped up across the 10 to the 12 and it doesn't appear that Brown is interested in using its timeouts to stop the clock and let this quarter and half roll to an end. Again the big number you know we've mentioned this before I don't want to sound like a broken record but for Brown 2.2 yards per play that has been the difference as Harvard has played so well defensively, and the offense done enough. Harvard needs to get one more playoff before they can go into the halftime locker room. Crimson have rushed for 68 yards at this point in the first half. Burke will get a chance to add a few more. He's up across the 15, and that will likely be it. Harvard a lot to like in that first 30 minutes of football. Used two different quarterbacks, went on a long scoring drive, and Saw some terrific performances out of their defense. Meanwhile, for Brown, they've got uh, to really move forward offensively. So the Crimson lead it 21 to 2. Halftime coming up here from Harvard Stadium. With the smartest people in the country, and you're expected to stay on that level with them.